Hello everybody, I'm Miss Jessica from EVPL McCullough and we're going to be continuing our chapter book story time and I'm here in my living room and I've already got a friend, Harper. She's a little off camera, but she's right here so she might pop in to say hello also. Now we have been reading Escape from Mr. Lemoncello's Library by Chris Grabenstein and we have finally gotten to the big game in the library, which is called Escape from Mr. Lemoncello's Library. So Kyle and his friends are going to be seeing if they can figure out the super secret exit to get out of the library. Now, before we get started, I have a question for you guys at home and you can comment down below um, the video, just have a grown up help you. So my question to you this time is, if you could be locked in and have a sleepover anywhere, where would you go? Now, I have two places that I can think of. So here in Evansville, I would definitely want to be locked in the Children's Museum of Evansville or SEMO because they have some really, really cool rooms that I think would be really, really fun to sleep in and have some fun with my friends in. The other place I can think of is Disney World. Now, that place I think would be really, really fun to be with your friends, especially if it was at night and there was nobody else there and you could ride on all the rides you want, all as much as you want and not have to wait in line. So those are my two picks I think would be really fun. So where would you like to go and spend a night if you could? And it can be anywhere in the world. So it'll be fun to see what other people have in mind and what sounds like a good time to you. All right, so the game just started. So we're about to start chapter 18. So Mr. Limoncello just said the game starts now, oh, here comes Harper. The contestant raced down the stairs to the rotunda reading room. Kyle saw Haley Daly dash down another set of steps into the basement to what the floor plan called the stacks. Miguel and Andrew, the two library experts, grabbed separate tables and started working the touchscreen computers. Bridget Watch did the same thing. Charles Chillington strolled out the arched doorway and into the foyer with the fountain. Yasmin Smith-Snyder was running around the circular room with her floor plan in front of her face, like someone frantically checking their text messages while racing down a crowded sidewalk. Sierra Russell found a comfy chair and sat down to finish her book. The girl definitely wasn't into the whole spirit of the game. So Kyle said Akimi, you wanna form an alliance? What do you mean? It's what people do on reality shows like Survivor. We help each other until, you know, everybody else is eliminated and we have to stab each other in the back. Um, I don't remember hearing anything about eliminations. Oh, right. But hey, there was nothing in the rules that said we couldn't share the top prize. I just want to win. Cool. So we're a team? Sure. Great, said Akimi. I nominate you to be our captain. All in favor, raise their hands. Kyle and Akimi both raised their hands. It's unanimous, said Akimi. Okay, let's go ask that antique librarian a question. What? We both get to ask one question, right? Right. Okay, here's mine. Hey, lady, how do we get out of here? And you think she'll tell you? No, not really. So what's your plan? Well, I was thinking, suddenly Yasmin shouted, I win! The rest of them stopped whatever they were doing. It's just like last night when Kyle found dessert in the most obvious place. To get out of the library, all we have to do is use one of the fire exits. Duh! She headed toward the hallway between the Book Nook Cafe and Community Meeting Room A. Kyle stood up. Um, Yasmin, I think you maybe missed some of what... Charles Chillington dashed into the room and shouted, You're not going to win, Yasmin, not unless you beat me to that fire exit. He bolted toward the corridor. Yasmin bolted toward it too. You guys, said Kyle. Kyle could see a red exit light glowing at the far end of the hallway. Charles and Yasmin were sprinting down. Charles stumbled and fell. Yasmin kept running, harder, faster. She slammed into the exit bar on the metal doors. Alarm sounded, flashing red light swirled. Somewhere a tiger roared? Mr. Lamoncello's voice rang out of the overhead speakers. Sorry, Yasmin, that's where your sidewalk ends. You broke the rules. You are out of the game. Your library card will be placed in the discarded bowl and you will be going home. 
As the fire exit door slowly swung shut and Yasmin disappeared into the bright sunshine outside the library, Kyle checked out Charles Tillington, who would have been sent home if he hadn't stumbled and had reached the exit. The guy was smirking. That was when it hit Kyle. Chillington had faked. Yasmin out! He knew she couldn't win by going out of fire exit, but he ran down the hall to fool her into thinking she was doing the right thing. Oh yeah, Ch Chillington was definitely in it to win it, no matter who he had to trample. Whistling casually, Charles still ba strolled back into the library. What's Chillington doing out in the entrance hall? asked McKinney. They told us the way out isn't the way in. Before Kyle could answer, Andrew Peckleman started shouting at Miguel, who had wandered over to Peckleman's table. Get away! You're trying to steal my idea! No, man, said Miguel. I just happened to see your screen, and I don't think that's particularly periodical. You know what, Miguel? I don't really care what you think. This isn't school. This is the public library, and you're not the boss in here, so just leave me alone. Miguel tossed up his hands. No problem, bro. I was just trying to help. Ha! You mean help me lose. Andrew stormed up the closest spiral staircase to the second floor and the Dewey Decimal Rooms. Miguel, looking sort of sad, headed up a separate spiral staircase. Bridget Wadge trailed after them. Want to follow those guys like Bridget did, whispered Akimi. I'll take Peckleman. You take Miguel. No, thanks, said Kyle, looking at the domed ceiling. I'm much more interested in the windows up there. Three stories above the rotunda floor, just below the Wonder Dome, there was a series of ten arched windows set between the recessed statue nooks. The windows acted like skylights at the base of the dome, allowing sunshine to flood into the room below. Do you think those windows open? asked Akimi. Maybe. Maybe not. But I've never let a closed or locked window stand between me and winning a game. Just ask my dad. What? Never mind. Come on. Kyle trotted over to the cushy stairs where Sierra Russell was per cushy chair where Sierra Russell was peacefully reading her book. Um, excuse me, I hate to interrupt. Sierra raised her head. She had a very dreamy look in her eyes. I need a book. Really? asked Sierra. What kind? Like the one you found up there. He gestured to the curving bookcases climbing at the back half of the rotunda. Fiction, said Sierra. Right, said Kyle. Love me some fiction. Well, what sort of story do you like? Something way up high, said Kyle. The higher, the better. Really? Yep. Well, that's an interesting way to put together a reading list based it on, based it on bookcase elevation. I'd like something on the top shelf, maybe right under the hologram statue of that guy hanging out with the cat in the hat. That's Dr. Seuss, said Sierra. He wrote the cat in the hat. Sweet, said Kyle, but I just like how close he is to that window. Chapter 19. Oh, Mrs. Tobin, Akimi called out. I need to use my librarian consultation. You sure about this, said Kyle. That's the beauty of being a team. After we burn through mine, we'll still have yours. The hologram librarian appeared and advised Akimi that Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain was the book located right underneath the holographic image of Dr. Seuss and the cat in the hat. After Mrs. Tobin vanished, Kyle and Akimi used their desktop computer to find the call number for Huckleberry Finn. Kyle grabbed a pen and scribbled it down on his palm. Are you going to do what I think you're going to do, said Akimi? Yep, I'm going to float up there, hoist myself onto that nook where the hologram is, and reach over to the window, push it open, and stick out my hand. Technically, I will have found my way out of the library. Nothing in the rules said about how far outside we had to go to win. You could fall. I don't think so. I'm wiry like a monkey. Seriously, Kyle, it isn't worth it. Um, yes it is. Did I mention I want to win? You should improvise a safety harness, suggested Sierra Russell. Huh? Well, in this adventure book I read once, the hero was in a very similar predicament. So he removed the curled handset wires from several telephone poles, bundled them together, and made a safety rope. Ten minutes later, Kyle, Akini, and Sierra had stripped the sp spring springy wires off a couple of telephone headsets. Kyle looped the cables around his waist and tied the other end to the handrail over the hover ladder. When fully extended, the safety rope would stretch out to a little more than 20 feet. It should work. I'd be careful up there, said Akimi. 
Yes, said Sierra, who wasn't reading her book anymore. Apparently watching a real life person risk his real life by doing something really, really scary was one thing more exciting than reading. Kyle locked his feet into the hover ladder ski boot bracket. Here we go. Serious adrenaline raced through his body as he tapped the call number for Huckleberry Finn into the hover ladder's book locator keypad. When you open the window, said Akini, just shout, I found the way out and we win. Right, said Kyle, all three of us. Huh? Hey, Sierra came up with the safety rope idea. She's on our team now too. Fine, whatever, just don't break your neck. Not part of the plan. Kyle pressed the enter button on the control panel. The platform floated up off the ground and drifted slightly to the right. Be careful, said Akimi, watch it. I'm not doing anything, said Kyle. This thingamajiggy is doing all the work. I'm just along for the ride. Kyle gripped the handles as the platform rose higher and higher. He sailed past books by Tolstoy and Thackeray. Tilting back his head, he looked up at the semi-transparent statues projected onto the curved niches next to the arched windows. There was a weird mix. A thoughtful African-American man in a three-piece suit and a bow tie. A guy with long curly hair, old-fashioned clothes, and a looking glass. A long-haired dude in a scruffy shirt hiding behind cutouts of the letters P and B. A bald guy with a beard. Since the statues were really holographic projections, they had chisel-type labels floating in front of their pedestals, identifying who the famous people were. The ones closest to Kyle were George Orwell, Lewis Carroll, Dr. Seuss, and Maya Angelou. As he continued to climb, Kyle could hear the soft whir of the electromagnets, invisibly lifting him toward the ceiling. And then he heard something much louder. What a ridiculous idea, Charles Chillington. He was standing on the second floor balcony at the far side of the run tandem. You know, Keely, I thought about doing the same thing, but then I noticed something you obviously overlooked. There's a wire mesh security screen on the other side of the windows. The levitating platform stuttered to a stop. Enjoy staring at the ceiling, Keely. I'm off to win another game. Kyle ignored Chillington and grabbed hold of the ledge beneath Dr. Seuss's berth. He tried to haul himself up, but his feet wouldn't budge. They were locked in place by those ski boot clamps. And this close to the skylight? Kyle could see that Chillington was right. There was a security screen on the other side of the windows. Kyle checked his wristwatch. It was 1 p.m. He and his teammates had wasted an hour on the lame window idea. He sighed heavily and stared up at the quivering Seuss projection and the bowed niche above his head. The cat in the hat's mouth started to move. Think left and think right. Think low and think high. Kyle recognized the voice. It was Mr. Limoncello. Oh, you think up if only... Oh, the things you can think up if only you try. In other words, Kyle was back to square one. He needed to think up a whole new escape plan. The ladder began to slow and steadily descent to the floor, even though Kyle hadn't pushed a button. Don't listen to Smarty Pants Tri Charles, Akimi coached, as Kyle coasted toward the floor. It was worth a shot. I agree, said Sierra. A blood-curdling scream came ringing up the staircase from the basement. That's Haley, said Akimi. I saw her go downstairs. That's where the stacks are, added Sierra. Come on, said Kyle. She could be in serious trouble. You should never help your competition, Keely, so scoffed Charles as he casually strolled down a spiral staircase. Unless, of course, you always play to lose. All right, and that's where we're going to stop for today because that's the end of chapter 19. And again, don't forget that you can go to evpl.org to get all of our resources. We have two apps that you can get on your devices. Uh, the first one is Libby by Overdrive, and then there's also Hoopla. And you can get to both of those through our website also. Both of those have ebooks and e audiobooks. So if you like listening to audiobooks, just like what we're kind of doing right now, there's definitely some good ones on there. And then also on Hoopla, you can get TV shows, movies, music, and all kinds of fun things for you to do while you're at home. So don't forget to answer our question from earlier. If you could go anywhere and be locked in with your friends, where would you go? And thank you so much for listening, and hopefully, I'll see you again soon. Bye!